Thanks, Freddy. Thanks. Let me wash up a bit. Arthur, I have something very important to discuss with you. What about talking about it tonight? No, we must discuss it now. Just a moment. Mommy, please leave it for another time. No, Shay. We must get it over with once and for all. But we'll be rushed. It's lunchtime. By the time we take Sydney and travel back to the office, it will be one o'clock already. Catherine, you can talk while I'm eating. Yes, Sato. Yes. That girl, the iron up. Carol Parker. Came late again this morning. Uh-huh. I fired her. Well, I'll have to put an ad in the newspaper for another person. I think you better take on a general servant this time. One who could do everything. I was really never in favor of someone who needed to do the ironing. Shirley, bring my little cup of sauce, please. Catherine, this lunch is damn good. That's all you have to say? Well, it's wonderful, but I just want that little cup of sauce. Not that I mean. I'm talking about my dismissing Carol Parker. What do you want me to say? You handle these things if you're not satisfied. Do what you want. It's okay by me. Carol told me that she was going to work in an office. <coughs> good for her. She said that it is the good man and company. Carol Parker is moving up in the world from my ironer to my co-worker. She said you are the one who is getting the job for her. Me? Yes, you. I think I remember now. One day I told her she looks the type of girl who should be working in an office. And she said if I could get a job for her in my office. I laugh and say, anytime you're ready. In a joke, I hope you didn't take me seriously. Is that the truth, Arthur? What's going on here? All these questions, as if I'm on trial for murder. What happened, Catherine? Something wrong? You should know. Somebody rang and told me that you were going around with Carol Parker. <laughs> and you believe that? I don't know. Well, look, my daughter is about the same age with this girl. Don't make me laugh. The person who called me said that they saw you several times in the car with her. It may have been once or twice for the most. Where, where's that? Anytime I see anybody I know walking, I give them a drop. I'll be lying if I say I don't find this girl attractive. But being friendly with her is quite a different matter. What makes it different? Catherine, cut it out, eh? You behaving like an old jealous housewife who trusts her husband only as far as she could see him. Just tell me why being friendly with her is a different matter. Well, in the first place, she's not my age. Second, she's not my type. And third, she has no education at all. We can't carry on a conversation together. And then again, any young girl friendly with an old man just want to eat all his money. I wish I could believe all that you say. So you feel I lied? This is real stupidness. If I was with Carl Parker, I would admit it. I don't know what you would do. You make yourself more and more difficult to live with every day. That's all your fault. You neglect me. So that's silly nonsense. After all these years of marriage, you should be happy that I'm still around. I could have gone off years ago if I wanted. And why didn't you? Well, after all, I have my faults, you have yours. We are not perfect. And I have learned to live with my faults as well as yours. I don't think any good will come out of my leaving you. After all, Catherine, you still have lots of good qualities. <laughs> You're trying to fool me. Anyway. Let me leave you to enjoy your lunch. Shirley, chat with your father for a while. I have some sewing to do. Shirley, sorry I had to be witness to all this. Mommy wanted me to be right here. She thought things would really come to an end this time. Remember, always it takes two to make a quarrel. True, true. Uh, Daddy, this afternoon afterwards, you think you could drop Mommy and me at this video club to collect a few films? 
Sorry, Sherry. I have an office meeting, and that will finish quite late. What about tomorrow? That should be all right. Hey, fine. Then my daughter asked me to take them to the video club. And I told her we had an office meeting. <laughs> it's a good thing you rang me this morning before I went home for lunch. Otherwise, it would have been a different story. I rang you because I didn't want you to call me at all. Carol, it's better if Catherine and I split than both of us. I tell you already, I don't want to leave your wife and come and live with me. But why, Carol? I tell you already, and I'm not telling you again. It's so all your old men's talk. Oh! Oh, I hate that word. But you're old for me. If I was your age, you would live with me. Well, perhaps. But you're getting braver and braver. You're stopping at lookout now. Hmm, <laughs> the Twin Towers looking real hard. It's not the it's solid steel. <laughs> when I say real hard, I mean real good or great. There's a new slang or something? Mm -hmm. Ah, I could spend the rest of my life like this. Yes, yeah, it's lovely. Oh, look at this girl in the newspaper. Nice, eh? I love that dress. Happy boy. Buy one for you now. How much for it, Carol? It's hard to say. It might be anything around 200 to 250 dollars. I'll give you 300 to be on the safe side. I love a man with plenty money. I could kiss you for that. Mm. What? Only a little baby kiss? <laughs> Are do you joking, boy? <laughs> outside will be church as usual tomorrow. I'll tell you everything then when we are alone. We must think only of now and forget everything else. You ain't afraid anybody passing might see your car? I reach a stage where I don't care who see and who ain't see. You should hear why I lie my way out at one time. I don't say already. Me and one, no man leave your wife for me. But you could be with me and she at the same time. Because you have a regular wife, right? You sure right? 